Hi, Gabby. It's a boy. He's being a good boy. He's being the best boy. Gavin, best boy. Gavin, the kitty cat. He's so cute and we know that he's Gavin. Gavin, the kitty cat. I love the boy. He's Gavin and we love him. Cause he's Gavin and we love him. Cause he's Gavin, 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 Gavin all the way. Yes, you are. A good boy. Is Rev weightlifting now? No. Yeah, my fucking pussy. <laughs> yeah. No. No. No, I'm, I'm like, I, but I, I do have to carry some weight. Yeah. When I walk. And that builds, I think it builds muscle pretty quick. Hi, Zar, Zar, Zar Watcher. How are you? Uh, boy. I got busy and had to leave. Dude, I just came back on, man. Holy shit, Jules said that Becky is her wife, man. Cool. I'm being cheated on. You're being cheated on? I bike at least seven miles a day. Definition comes after weight loss. Ooh. You want a cookie? Oh, wait, you don't want a cookie. Because, you know. Definition. <laughs> Theological question. Do Christians have a license to sin? No. No. Uh, but, but I thought, Jules, you, you were with, you were like, with a committed thing with Shani here. I feel cheated on. You're heartbroken. It's okay. It's okay. We're supposed to be reviewing the world's or Britain's most hated couple. I figured since we're America's most hated couple that, you know, be, you know, watching Britain's most hated couple, it might, you know, yeah. But we've never done anything like this. Okay. Yeah. All right. House of Hawes. The House of Hawes. Hawes. Cromwell. Cromwell. <laughs> what? What you want? We're gonna be doing this the whole time, aren't we? Probably. I'll know. Like 25 Cromwell Street, Gloucester. Home to Fred and Rose West and their nine children. I see that Outside, guy's face on an ordinary there. family home. Nine this fucking children? Hell no. I think I heard of this guy before. Holy fuck, Jules is going down, man. All right. All right. Make it happen. All right. Make it happen. All right. I. Whatever. I'll be one of the film hands. <laughs> I'll volunteer to ask Jules. I'll film it. I bet they're from lo North London. Oh. Really? Fred and Rose West. That's right. That's right, Melly. Fred and Rose West. Down in North London. Side, the scene of some of the most horrific crimes in British history. Oh, shit. Yeah. Bushy's face is all for now for me. We said, we're going to kill you. And we're going to bury you under this paving stones of Gloucester. A house of utter what? We're going to bury you under the paving stones of Gloucester. You know? We're going to get all over. All the way. <laughs> right. No, Gloucester, uh, West Midlands. Oh. Anyway, oh, I, 
I've definitely seen this guy's story. Oh, no, man. Yeah. ...which shocked even the toughest investigators. Uh, it was obvious as a, a human thigh bone and female and young. Officers searching 25 Cromwell Street have today discovered what they believe to be another set of human remains. You are facing something that you have never, ever seen before. And you really don't. We just fucked everything up down Crown Crest. So one day, we, me, and my, me and my boo over here, we just decided to do it. Oi. We were naughty. Very naughty. Naughty. Oh my god, Golden Goddess of the Geeks is saying, hey daddy. To Dragnaught. Oh, well, ugh. She's, she's, she's one of the chicks that fucked him, I think. Ew. I said don't bring them in here. That's happening, though. Don't bring them in here. That's what that is. Just so you know. Yeah. Yuck. Go away. Drag. You get timeout time. No. Timeout. <laughs> don't be doing that and giving your harem all the way here. I don't want to see your shit. <laughs> Fuck. We got to be respectable mates, aren't we? Yeah, I love you, Becky. Aren't we? Let's be respectable. We love you, Becky. You gotta do what you gotta do. Leave your female fantasy on your own channel, goddammit. Don't want to see it. This is the true story of Fred and Rose West. Nah, mate. It's too personal. I don't want to deal with that shit. Yeah, we don't need spillover on this channel from his with this, this, yeah, this banging of... I'm not promoting fucking... that shit, and no. it's not his channel, it's my channel, so fuck him. It's not about him. You keep the 24th of February, 1994. Know your fucking place. The last mm -hmm. night Fred and Rose would spend together, after 22 years of marriage, and the start of a murder investigation that would shock the world. Well. Fred West, a builder in his 50s, worked hard to pay for his house in the center of Gloucester, where he lived with his devoted wife, Rose, and their children. These were people who were well regarded. I mean, they weren't highly regarded, but at least well regarded by most of those around them. A bit eccentric, a bit odd, but do anything for you. Summer 1969, Rose was waiting for a bus when Fred first saw her. Man, summer 1969 was a fucking crazy ass year, man. I guess. Sorry. You had fucking Nam. We went out into fucking outer space. <coughs> went on the moon. Yeah. Well, they had to make it good at 69, so. 69s are always good, yo. Yeah, they had to make it yeah. really good. Yeah. Yeah, I said what I said, pillow. I said what I said, and I mean what I mean. Mm -hmm. He can keep his ladies on his side of the internet. I don't want to fucking see it. <laughs> Ugh. <laughs> she was almost 16, and Fred was 28. Fred tracked Rose down to the cafe where she waited. I'll tell you this, I'd rather eat Dee Dee's cooch. Then, then, then see that shit. I want to die by being 69. Me too. Boy. That's a good way to die. That's a good way to die. Shani, mm -hmm. I used to own a chocolate shop called Chocolate Heaven in Glassshire. Oh. German chocolate. Mm. Oh. That chocolate place in Boulder. Germans know how to make fucking chocolate, bro. I heard true. Yeah, what's your secret? Uh -huh. Ew! McDonald's is poison. They have awesome salts. 
thick satin straw. Delicious coke. The son of a farm and laborer. Santa Orange. Fred got his way with the women he pursued. So, oh shit, Fred got so his way. Rose was Fred's lover. They got his way. Oh shit. Pregnant with their first daughter, Heather. Oh shit, they got pregnant. Oh, wet off. He got his way. Oh, he did. He got his way. He got his. He he got her pregnant. He got her knocked up. They need to get married. It's yeah. 1969. They have to get married. It's shotgun. Her wedding. father is not gonna appreciate that shit. Well, it's a bullshit wedding anyway, isn't it? it... <laughs> More fucking tongue. It's bullshit. <laughs> it's right bullshit. It is right bullshit. <laughs> it's fuck. It's fuck. It's fuck. It's fuck all. Oh, fuck all. <laughs> it's fuck all. Fucking wanker. A <laughs> wanker. He's a fucking wanker. He's a wanker. <laughs> He's a fucking wanker. <sighs> Over 20 years later, and Heather had been missing for seven years. Allegations of sexual abuse within the West sexual. family alert... Did Gloucestershire police to Heather's disappearance oh, yes. um, after an initial search failed to locate her? Like this Detective Superintendent Nipple itch. John careful. Bennett nipple was itch. In to investigate. <laughs> Sometimes God sends us messages in different ways. With nipple itch? Well, that basically meant. Do you have an itchy nipple? <laughs> that may be God's way of contacting you if you have an itchy nipple. <laughs> Lord, what are you doing to me? Oh. Uh, My nipples! <laughs> nipples! I take you your nip nip. Okay. Anyway, we're acting like idiots. It's a spirit of confusion. It probably is. <laughs> he had gone uh, illegally because she would have had a passport and uh, was dead. The police search quickly sent on the West the in Cromwell Street. Oh. It was some form of a Cromwell. family joke that Heather was under the patio of Cromwell Street. This being mentioned mostly by Fred and Rose West to their children. They joke around and say Heather's underneath the patio. Yeah, I put Heather under the patio. She was a bad girl one day. And then, you know, the knocks that have happened and we decided to put it. Hey, why not commemorate her memory by putting her under the patio? Right. Hey, Gavin. Hi, Gabby. Hi, baby. Gavin. My baby. You you're like my boy? baby. Yeah, you'll come here, baby. Come here, baby. Go ahead. Come on. Oh, come on here, That's son. Yeah, you're a yeah, good boy. Oh. Yeah, you're a good boy. Yeah, you're a good boy. Oh. Oh, yeah. Jojo, good boy. Oh, we love our gallons. Hi, baby. You give me handsome face. Yeah. You give me handsome face. Isn't this his coat soft? I know, and he looks at you with such love, like, ha, ha. With a big smile. Gavin's such a good boy. Yeah. You're such a good boy. Yeah. Yeah, you are. Yeah, I hear the purrs. I hear the purrs. He's a purr boy. You can feel it. I know. It's a vibration. I want to propose to Jules to be her number two. Damn, Ted. Good. Damn. You want to play? 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 Oi. Oi. We got to see Fred Rose. Children, when they'd done something wrong, hadn't eaten their food or no. refused to go to bed or been naughty in some way. On the naughty. 24th of February, naughty. the police moved in to search Fred West's garden. Oh no! He was saying <coughs> he went that in the garden. There was no truth in this, and that he was going to sue the police uh, for the I'll damage sue that you. to his home. Slab by slab, the police removed Fred's patio. They found nothing at first. Then, digging deeper, something caught their eye. What caught their eye? It was a bone. A bone? Was it human? Oh. They called in forensic pathologist Professor Bernard Knight to find out. A bone of a human. And it was obvious that in two seconds it was a, a human thigh bone and female and young. Ah, oh, no. A pipe at some stage and he's digging. 
So I was digging through a mixture of... Uh, Fred was a naughty boy. Yeah, he was. Right. Fred's been burying them girls in the garden again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> it was the fucking dog. It was the fucking dog. Bitch. Bitch. <laughs> oh, my God. Hi, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, we're not getting very far through this. So it was a sort of black, sticky mess. But then, when I went into yeah. this hall, at least I think there's a police officer down there, and he handed up some bits. Uh, and I looked at these. I remember looking, I think, at <laughs> Inspector Bennett and saying, "Well, either she's got three legs, or he got more than one." The police have found the remains of two bodies. Oh no! They suspected one was Heather, but who else was under the patio? They put another one in the patio. The police confronted Fred. Fred made a staggering confession. What? Not only Heather, but two other women were buried in the garden. No. He had a name. He said she was Shirley Robinson, his secret lover, and pregnant with his child. What? The thing is, is Rose doesn't know anything at all. She'll... He's like, you know what? She's praying, and um, I didn't want to take responsibility, so. You know. Ah. Uh, Ugh. Don't abuse women, drag. Time out for that. No, but it makes sense that, that we should maybe not do all, like, the fake accent and shit, because it is true, Frank. That's true. It's kind of like, I don't know. Might be oh, different. fuck it. I can make things lighthearted if I want to. It's called dark humor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's true. Anyway. That's true. Done anything. The other, he claimed, was Shirley's mate. The Shirley's police needed mate? more information, but Fred kept changing his story. Yeah. One minute he was making admissions, the next minute he was denying that he had done any of these murders and it was somebody else. She's not going to let me say to her, I strangled Heather without coming straight to the police. Don't get Rose wrong. Rose lived by the law. Properly, I mean. But all the time, whenever he returned to making his admissions, he would reinforce that his wife knew nothing of these crimes at all. Oh. That they were purely... He's taking it for Rose, man. Taking it for Rose. Was it possible that Rose knew nothing about Rose. the murders? No, nah, Rose knew something, That's man. Three young women that, killed and buried under her nose, including her daughter, Helen. Nah, she knew something. There's no way she didn't know about that shit. They called your dad Willy Wonka. Wonka. <laughs> Did he look like Gene Wilder? Bill Wonka. One of the most horrific crimes in the UK and affected so many. I'm sorry, I apologize. I'm making things lighthearted. Jeez, I'll try to be more serious. This is a boy. He's a boy. He's so cute. He's just like, I'm just loving the company I'm having. He loves you. Yes. He's a good boy. He's a very good boy. He's so cute. Oh. You guys are beautiful. Didn't affect me. I don't even like children. Holy fuck. Holy fuck. Oi. Cromwell Street was turning out to be no ordinary family home. No. But a house of unimaginable They are horrors. undignified, dear. Mm. Mm. Carbonara, Ted. In 1994, yeah. one of the biggest criminal investigations in Britain began in an ordinary house in Gloucester. In Gloucester? The remains of three young women had been recovered from under the patio at 25 Cromwell Street. That's fucked. One of the victims, Heather, was the teenage daughter of builder Fred West, who had confessed to all three murders. Now, Fred had started to change his story. 
But in one thing he was consistent. His wife, Rose, knew nothing about the murders. I know she doesn't like them. She knew something, man. But she'll not have it broken. He even started to converse with the officers off tape, almost suggesting that uh, he oh. wasn't guilty of murder, he was guilty of manslaughter, that uh, he would be out soon, um, that this would all be some big tragic accident that he would portray. Was this a case of manslaughter, as Fred claimed? Or were his quick confessions masking something far more sinister? Evidence found with a third My victim baby pointed boy. to murder. Cute. One of them had a black plastic leather belt with a buckle. His first victim was my friend's mum. Over the top of the head. What? Okay. Of course, because all the soft tissues had gone, everything sort of. I'm doubting that. Forward about, but it was obvious that this was a some kind of bondage thing on the head. But who was the third victim? All the police knew was what Fred had told them. She was the friend of his secret lover, Shirley Robinson, <coughs> the second victim found at Cromwell Street. It was obvious it was going to be hard to identify these bodies because the bones themselves never give you any clue as to who the person is, not the bones. Usually it's the face, the skull, huh. and the teeth. And of course that's the province of uh, Professor Whittaker. No. There is more information in your teeth about you and your lifestyle and your age and possibly even how you died than there is in most other parts of your body. What? Especially if the body is decomposed and the soft tissues are gone and the teeth are still there. To help the police, Professor Whitaker needed photographs of likely victims. Of likely vi Providing we can get a photograph of them smiling and showing their teeth those teeth have an incredible amount of information in them in terms of height, tilt, roundedness, all of these which will show up in a, in a good photograph. And so we... Ah, that's interesting. All right, all right. Ugh. So many families were affected. I had no idea about these people. See, you see how us Americans know shite? i seen this guy's We assess those in the laboratory and then we sort of fuse simply a photograph that comes in to me from the police oh. with an image oh, of the funny. person's skull. Maybe. And if we've got it right, oh. it sort of goes click. Click? But how could the police provide photographs when they didn't have a name for one of the victims? Oh, my Unsolved missing persons files were reopened. Button. Names began to emerge. Winter 1968. Ah, oh, shit. Whoa. Mary Bastholm, a young waitress, went missing from a bus stop in Gloucester. Uh. Five years later, a young student, Lucy Partington, vanished from another bus stop, this time in nearby Cheltenham. Huh. Was it possible one of them was the third victim buried at Cromwell Street? Or could they both be there? Gavin's being a boy. What is he doing over there? Gavin! He's just playing with the thing that's in front of the door. Gavin, stop. He likes the feeling of it on his feet. On his thighs. Good boy. Yeah. Forensic psychologist Paul <laughs> Wetton was brought in to profile Fred West and answer the burning question. He's really good victims. at stopping when you tell him no. I was in a position where I had paperwork that went back 20, 30 years. And as I began to look at that, then I the love the little swirl right in the middle of his head. Uh -huh. Because what I began to see were some of the hallmarks, the highlights of a very dangerous offender. Really? I told the man that I'd been told might be sitting downstairs. My view was oh. that all that had happened is you had simply seen three high points and that it was very unlikely, unthinkable really, that you were going to have silences across the intervening years. The time between those three marks was going to be filled with other sorts of murder, other sorts of killing. A man with a 
appear in court this morning following the discovery of three bodies in his back garden. 52-year-old Fred West from Gloucester is accused of murdering the women, including his 16-year-old daughter Heather, who disappeared in 1987. I listened to the news. His own diary. And I just went straight back. That's disgusting. There's no words for the, 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 the How can some? How? I mm, I don't know. I don't know how that's possible. Like, like why was the mother okay with this shit? These people are disgusted. Your own daughter, it's insane. To 1972, and I was there again, and I remembered those words, you know, bury me under the paving stones. There's hundreds of girls, and I thought paving stones, patio. Hundreds? Same thing. Hundreds. He Caroline said, Roberts looked hundreds. after Heather when she worked for the Wests as a nanny. Deeply disturbed by news of her death, she rang the police to offer a statement. That night, I couldn't sleep at all. I knew the police were coming in. I was trying to remember all the things that I took 22 years trying to forget. Um, and it was so vivid that in the end, I, I had to get up in the middle of the night and I just wrote everything down. It was all too for me because I really felt responsible for their deaths. It was almost like they were my family. You can't do that to yourself. I intimately. And I think that's because I know up to a point I shared the same experience as them. Another call to the police, this time from a friend of the parents of Linda Goff, a girl who had gone missing in 1973 and whose last known address was 25 Cromwell Street. New information started to emerge. During the course of looking for her, <laughs> Mrs. Goff had gone to the address and been told by a woman and her husband, Linda, had left some time previously. I love you, buddy. I love you. You're beautiful. Linda's mother had noticed that Rose was wearing her daughter's slippers. If this was the case, and Linda was one of Fred's victims. I have that dress. It's possible. Well, Rose that's not a dress. It's, it's an apron. It's an apron. Yeah. He was also wearing a cardigan or some uh, knitted clothing that with Linda's. And inside on a wordy gig type uh, washing line was some of Linda's nightwear. The Wests told Mrs. Goff that Linda had moved on, leaving some of her things behind. Believing their story, but unable to locate Linda, Bobby. June Goff waited for her daughter to return. <coughs> Years went by, but Linda never came back. No! Caroline Roberts first met the Wests six months before Linda moved in. In her statement to the police, Caroline recalled in chilling detail how the West selected their potential victims. No! This one night I was hitchhiking back from Tewksbury on my own and this car pulled up um, with two people in and this was Fred and Rose West. When I first got in there I didn't think they were a couple because of the age difference and the fact that she was quite an attractive young girl and he was not an attractive man. As we went on our way back towards Cinderford. He's we not talking. that terrible looking. And that's when I found out they just got married. <laughs> and, um, I mean, he's, he's, he's not good looking. You know? No, but he's not that terrible looking. Holy shit. He's not, he's not attractive at all. He's got a weird looking face, dude. Kind of like a Halloween. All right, I believe you. I got two more inches than that, babe. Imagine having to convince your girl you're two inches. Huh? Okay, Fluffy McGuff. I have um, no idea what that means. As you were, sir. Three little girls. And they, they were talking to me and asking me about what I was doing and that. And I said that I tried to avoid being at home as much as possible because of my stepdad. We kind of just didn't get on. And with that... They both, at the same time, just turned around and said, hey, would you like to come and work with us, looking after our children? Our children? And within a week of meeting them, I moved in to 25 Cromwell Street. What are you nuts? Caroline's job would be to look after Heather, newly born baby May, and Anna Marie, the oldest child Anna from Marie. Fred's first failed marriage. Anna One of the strange things was that they had a lot of visitors, mainly men, Coming to the ice. That's actually one of the names I was going to name my daughter, Isabella Ana Maria. She's so beautiful. Yeah, I know, right? I love that. Um, and never, I I Shannon will Marvel never have a girl. Now, and I'm sure she must have told me. She so I put that behind me. 
This womb will never carry a girl. Only boys were made in here. Right. <laughs> oh, I wish I could have a girl. Anyway. She was mus a muscle. Suck which it up. I believed at that time. Oh, mama. There was an even darker side to Fred. It it taught me um, things like he performed abortions. I don't worry if you get pregnant, Caroline. You know we can put you right. I can do abortions. I've done abortions before. Holy then. shit! And, he, and the sickening thing was that he would say things like, "Yeah," and the women were so grateful they'd offer their bodies to me straight after. Ew. Am I still in timeout now, mommy? Yes, you're being condescending. But yeah, and I, I thought, nah, this man's just making it all up. Yeah, right. Shortly after, Caroline left Cromwell Street, hoping never to return. But Fred and Rose. Yes, we can time out people for talking about your cock. Thank you. Is that that dude? Britain, yeah. Caroline okay, Robert like, I'm sick of that shit. I'm, I'm, I'm done One thing looking. clear, the house. No, no, no rev cock talk. Yeah, just, I'm done with that shit. It's so creepy and weird to me. It's very, very bizarre to me. All right. And like, it's I, making I, him feel uncomfortable. It's like, Don't really, it. it's it's over the line sexual shit. And it's like, I like him, so. It, I know, like him, too. Thanks. He's my friend. I know. He loves you. He makes me happy. Good. See? Damn. Thank you. You're welcome. You validated me. Was the key. <laughs> to understand the Wests fully and what went on inside their home, he needed to visit the crime yeah, scene. Yeah, that is rude. Thank you, Nate. He needed to visit Cromwell Street. It was an ordinary house. It was one of a row. It was the end one, as I recall. I think its neighbor on one side was a church. The church walls made the boundary on one side of the house. Going up the stairs, they're quite steep. But as you turn round on the back of the doorway, the, the bit above the doorway, there is a full length. Yeah, they must be bored with their stupid lives. It's okay. They'll live. Picture of a woman. Very reminiscent of the young. Oh my! Rosemary. Yeah. Beckoning. Rosemary. Disturbing details of the West's lives started to emerge. Bedrooms Rose used for prostitution, fitted with listening and recording devices, so that Fred could watch. But what? He was a pimp? And he'd record that? Holy shite. <laughs> uh. He just wants to be banned? Alright, next time he's in here... Have at it. Ban him. I don't give a fuck. Silver Shamrock. If he wants to be banned, I'll gladly, you know. Oblige? Oblige, yeah. Most significant of all for Britain was the cellar. This part of the house was quite self-contained. Um, people could go about whatever they did there, <laughs> being reasonably sure that they weren't going to be disturbed. <laughs> if you came in through the back way, you'd have to come in through kitchens and a bathroom area, and to get to where we He's are... He's like that little annoying fucking dog that follows that bulldog in that Looney Turns thing. Hey, what are we gonna do, boss? Hey, boss, hey, boss, what are we gonna do now? And he just chases me fucking around everywhere. Maybe you Like, holy fuck. He's nuts. Yeah. Oh, no, it's quite an intricate little route. So you're not going to be disturbed. There are no external windows. The brickwork is quite oh, thick. Okay. You are in the lower part of the foundation of the house. So that, if you like, is the... Uh, it, it, it serves a joint function. It's the ultimate pleasure room. <laughs> it's also the working room. Yeah, it's, thanks. It's the room where these dreadful things are done. I he told the police to move their search inside that. the house. 
I mean, the words, in a way, were clumsy. But, I mean, they're in the garden because the house is already full. Thanks, Melanie. They're in the garden. Garden. Yep, they're in the garden. Corbin had said that West was a predatory sexual psychopath. Um, and he had said quite clearly that there was a possibility of there being more victims. I... Jesus! Insane. That's some crazy shit. These mods are ruining the hangout. I'm out. How? They ain't doing shit. Baby carrot. Aww. Aww. What a little cute edgelord. No, I'm just sick of hearing about it. Like, I'm sick. <laughs> You just got timed out for 69, 69, 69 seconds. <laughs> I popped. Oh, man. Jewel rules with an iron fist. We're more lenient. Got him. <laughs> I'm out of here. <laughs> Saying now that you are facing something that you have never ever seen before, and probably very few of your colleagues have seen, uh, and you really don't want to see. Yeah. It. He'll be back. The police began to search the cellar for more victims. Fred was told they had moved inside the house. He was also questioned about Linda Goff and why Rose had been wearing her clothes. Fred refused to answer. Just after half past five that afternoon, uh... She was wearing another chick's, a dead chick's clothes. Whoa. Why are you wearing a dead chick's clothes? Oh, she Whoa. gave them to me. Yeah, Whoa. she's missing, you know that, right? Oh, I didn't. Bless you all. Jesus bless you guys. Yeah. Ah, oh. finish and moan. Zoom tight. Thank you. I received a phone call from the cell block to say that uh, Howard Ogden, the solicitor who was representing West, had asked to see me urgently. When he arrived, he appeared quite pale. And, oh. Uh, I remember he asked me if I'd like to sit down. I wish to admit to a further approx nine killings. It was something nine that killings. seemed to be beyond belief. Nine. Nine killings. Completely unexpected. Out of the blue. Expressly. Charmaine. Rena. Beyond my personal experience, Linda Goff, and I suspect he remembers all of them too. Many other police officers and others to be identified. I even questioned whether, uh, personally, I was capable of handling this. Where are they? Officers in Gloucester searching 25 Cromwell Street have today discovered what they believe to be another set of human remains. Holy shit! Everybody wanted to know what was going on they just need to dig up the whole freaking property they're just all over dead bodies everywhere that's insane oh one minute it's a physician's place okay one minute guys
All right. All right. That was just a reminder. Some confirmation. Yeah. A confirmation, whatever it is, mm -hmm. about my doctor's appointment. Mm -hmm. Hi, Stitchy Sue. How are you? I'm going to the doctor, Sue. Yay. Angel of Cromwell Street, Hillary Allison became the voice of the police investigation. But with global press interest growing by the second, Hillary had her hands full. My recollection is... Wait, one minute. I gotta go potty. My bladder is driving me nuts today. Be right back. Be right back. You can talk to the folk. It's the monster. It is the monster. Because I feel it too. <laughs> Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. I do have an unblocked uh -huh, show. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Oh, my love, love. Do you want a Sammy? No, I'm good. Okay. I'm fine. Okay. I've had food. Okay, Bobby. I love you. I love you. I gotta go pee pee. You know you're an amazing girl. You know you're an amazing boy. No, I want to be better boy for you. You want to be better? Yeah. How? I gotta get my head straight. <laughs> That'll happen, my love. Yeah. You're the best girl. Thank you, my love. Oh, God, I got to go and pee pee. Mama, she has the pee pees. Oh. And Gavin be your pee pee guard. Is he coming? He might come to you. I, I don't see him anywhere. I don't see him anywhere either. Yeah, I, I see a drag. You're there. La -di da 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 This true crime shit is really awesome, though. Like, I'm, like, addicted to it, definitely. I like this shit. I just wanted to ask what I should add to treat stream before Shannon times me out again. <laughs> I don't know what you would... I mean... I think gumbo, like if, if I were to choose something that I could eat, you know, I think I would go with like a good, you know, uh, gumbo. How about shepherd's pie? With some shrimp. How about shepherd's pie? I'm, I'm saying shrimp gumbo for me, but if you want shepherd's pie, that's fine. Bajan rice. I'm going to look for shepherd's pie. Okay, there you go. You took uh, and then gumbo. All right. Shepherd's pie is delicious. He's looking for some treat stream. Oh. We had Chinese yesterday. It was amazing. I did. It was real good. Beijing. Beijing beef. <coughs> Be no, Beijing rice. I don't know what Beijing rice is. <sighs> I've had some good Louisiana, I like smaller restaurant, Louisiana cuisine, definitely. Good shit. Cajun cuisine. Like place in the Poconos. Uh, Fisherman's Wharf, it was called. And they had like Cajun, oh my God, Cajun catfish and shit. Oh. Yay. Hey, boy. I'm back. Yeah. Oh. Meow. 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 Right, key cats. Oh. Rice from Barbados. I wish I had some fucking shepherd's pie. I need to make that. Yeah, that'd be right. Walking out to give a briefing, and suddenly having cameras flashing all over the place. Which I do see the answer in meows. Exactly. Face, and what we had to try and do was manage that and say, come on folks, be I speak kitty cats. Reasonable. Questions one at a time. We will read a statement out for you. We will do some interviews with you individually afterwards if you want it. But please, can you just back oh, back? Oh, nice. Yeah, see you too. Gumbo, that's it, right. All right. 
know, it looks like a football match with uh, Japanese photographers. And at one occasion, the police had had barriers up and they sort of burst through on one occasion. It was almost crushed against the wall. It was a bit off-putting when you are just trying to go to work. <laughs> We had a number of calls That's from reporters really all over the country, national okay. and local, saying, well, we've now heard it's that, going to be 32 that, that, bodies, that. it's going to be 69 bodies. That's we've heard that Fred West has fathered 32 children. All sorts of um, things were being put to us. Now, of course, all we could say at that stage was, look, this is pure speculation. No one has mentioned those figures. As soon as we get any information, we'll give it to you. Um, but we certainly can't get into the business of speculating. Whatever the press imagined, no the police now knew there Oi. were 12 victims. Three had been identified, Heather, Shirley Robinson, and now Alison Chambers, oh, who Fred had wrongly claimed was Shirley's maid. Fred had also confessed to a further nine murders, including his first wife, Rena Costello, and her daughter, Charmaine. He killed but where were Lucy Partington and Linda Goff? Were they buried in the cellar or hidden in the walls of 25 Cromwell Street? It really and is. if they were, how could Fred's wife, Rose, not know about the murders. What? Sounds good, Ted. Ooh. That sounds really good. Yeah, it sounds real good. I, I don't know. I'm not a big fan of chicken sausage, though. I like, you know, Italian sausage, but... Mmm. Mmm. I love me some Italian sausage myself. Fred West <laughs> confessed to the murder of 12 young women, but the horror was not confined to West's home in Cromwell Street. Fred told the police there were other bodies in other places. Oh, he led them to Munch Markle near Gloucester, the tiny rural village where he grew up. This field's known locally as uh, Letterbox Field. Oh. When we brought him out here, hoping he could identify Letterbox the location field. where he buried the body. We're very fortunate within four days of starting excavations here, we did recover human <laughs> remains. Um, and those were subsequently like, identified as being of uh, Rita Costello, it. Fred's yeah. uh, first wife. Now, she hadn't been seen since 1971, so the uh, body had been in the ground My girl's for 20 years. Yes. But there was something else, something detectives hadn't bargained for. What? Fred revealed that lying close by was another body. Rena's friend, Ann McFaul, who, like Shirley Robinson, the had also been right. pregnant with his child. At the time that we believe the body was buried, the field was completely different. There was a, a small pond down there, and more Taken. than that, the farmer told us <laughs> that he'd added a... <laughs> That's so cute how you say that. <laughs> Pagan. Pagan. That's so cute. Shelly should have some buttered crumpets to complete the British accent and some tea, a spot mm. of tea. Mm. Just spot. Just a spot of tea. Just spot. About eight or nine feet of soil biscuit. above the original level. In a biscuit, exactly. A biscuit. We spent two months. Oh, come on, Jesus. Digging out a huge amount of ground. In fact, the hole was the size of an Olympic size swimming pool. We did not. Da, 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 da. That's what Chantel says. That her hole is as big as Olympic size swimming pool. What? <laughs> Thank you. Do, 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 do. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> Told you, damn, we were trying to be nice. Yeah. I know, right? Yeah. They'll do it just to do it now. All this work, right? and we were that almost on the point of closing the operation down oh, when shit. we finally discovered the, uh, the the remains. The recovery of the uh, the remains of Anne McFall was rather poignant here because we believe that she was probably the first victim of, of Fred West, and she was the last one to be found. Oh, that sucks. Inside West's home at Cromwell Street, the police search was also reaching a conclusion. Inch by inch, they'd stripped the house bare. Five more unknown victims what had been the painstakingly fuck? exhumed from the basement. And in the bathroom, they finally found the remains of Linda Golf. Ah. Cromwell Street was empty at last. With nothing left to find, and the media demanding information, the next task for the police was to identify the victims. This onerous task lay in one man's hands, 
Professor Whitaker was making progress with a skull oh. from the cellar with a distinctive clue. Their to names are all whimsical. Whitaker. Must yeah. have had some damage to her two front teeth. They had crowns on them. These crowns were temporary crowns. Now, to a dentist, this means she had an accident, probably. She had had the work done to make new crowns. She had temporary ones put on, and she died and was unable to go back for that fitting. The precision of Whitaker's observations led a police colleague to ask him an unlikely question. Ah, oh, no, what was the unlikely question? Who's walking a lot? Andrea? Yeah. Ah. She remembered an incident from a hockey match many years before when a local girl well, had her teeth knocked out. Her and made the troll and she asked if it could be the same girl. We had, I don't know, 10 <coughs> missing girls in Britain. They were in the frame. And a woman police detective says, Do you think it could be this girl who was playing hockey? And of course, the answer has to be it's incredibly unlikely, but we ought to check it out. The team was put on to sort this out, and it turned out to be her. Oh. I realised that Lucy wouldn't be dead if she hadn't Lucy. been a female, and if she hadn't been collided in this most extraordinary and incomprehensible way with the world of the West that was the complete opposite <coughs> of her life. She sounds like she's straight up, like, from Harry Potter. Yeah. Definitely. Like, straight up. Like, she could be, like, um, Ron Weasley's fucking mom. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. You're right. <sighs> it's true. The girl who'd once played hockey was Lucy Partington. After oh, no. 20 years of waiting... Marion could lay her sister to rest. She asked the police if she could see Lucy's remains. I just walked forward and took the lid off, and there it was, and there was something about the shape Harry of it. Harry Potter. Harry Potter. I never watched Harry Potter. Potter, fuck. <laughs> Oh my god, I love Ted. Harry Potros. He'd be so fun to hang out with. We'd just be laughing all night. But pretty much. <laughs> We'd be perpetually laughing. I knew that it was Lucy's skull. <laughs> it was just like the shape of this. Fucking dirt. Ron Weasley's mom. <laughs> Harry I told Potter. My mom what we were going to do, and I said, "Is there anything you?" <laughs> Now we gotta do that. The Harry Pot Roast. The magical Harry Potter Pot Roast. <laughs> it's Pot Roast with edible glitter on it. Wee! It's Yay. magical! Mm. <laughs> Harry Pot Roast. Snape, Snape. Severus Snape. Snape. Mm. Alan Rickman. I'll cook more. I definitely will. When we get our shit together, fuck. When we get our shit together, we'll probably both be cooking, both be doing different types of streams. We'll be doing lots of cool shit. We gotta get our shit together. What did I do? You made us laugh. Yeah. You'd like me to put in with Lucy's bones, and she gave me these two old toys of Lucy's. Two old toys that we played with as children. Alan Rickman. And Alan Rickman is Bay. I love old him. straw stuffed lion that was called Chocker, and another one that was called Bunny, who was dressed up in his smart velvet trousers. Trousers. We his put trousers. <laughs> on either side of her skull and wrapped it all up. You know, it was like tucking up what was left. What? It really helped to make it real. What? Okay. Okay. I've been away from the West House for about a month. Um, and then on December the 6th, I was it checking back from Tewksbury again in exactly the same spot that they picked me up five weeks earlier. 
and they pulled up, they were both sat in the front, and Rose um, opened the window, the passenger side, and was all smiling, and, and then she said, uh, oh, oh yeah. Carl, I'm so glad to see you, I'm really sorry about what happened, um, and then Fred leaned across, and he was all smiling, saying, I'm really sorry, Karen, didn't mean to upset you like that, I was only joking, and then they were like talking and saying, oh, the kids really missed you, and we really missed you, and I kind of felt like, even though I didn't want to get in the car, I kind of felt like they were being so nice that I had to. Okay. Okay, thanks. You're nuts. I would never get in the car with someone being like, ah, oh, come on, come on in the car. And I'd be like, fuck you. <laughs> Fucking creep boy. <laughs> get the fuck away from me. I'll do some crazy ass shit to defend myself. I'm chat with Carolyn. About two miles into that journey, Fred looked at me in the I secretly want a woman to call me daddy. He's my daddy. Boy. My daddy. What is a sexy female term, mama? And with that, she grabbed me. I think that's too sexy. It's too maternal. I guess Ew, it was like slut. please. No, you think that's no, hot? No. We call it a slut. No. No, that's I don't think that is either. At all, babe. Like babe is a nice thing. I like babe. You I can like call babe. me mama. I like. I don't know. Mom is weird to me. I'm thinking of my mother. You can call me anything you want, honey. Yeah, I like babe. Babe is my favorite. Yeah. To call you, I love baby, babe. Put up on the grass, I like Baby. <laughs> Oh uh, no. They <laughs> punched her? I was not dead. Knock it out. Knock it out. Oh. <sighs> Drink it from tea. When I came through, they um, tied my hands behind my back. The guys got off. Um, and they were wrapping like parcel tape all, all around my head. What they the were way? telling me, if you just calm down, we're just going to make you a cup of tea, tidy your back up, and then we're going to take you home. And they did do that. They, they sat me down and they, they, they took the tape off me, um, undid my hands, and gave me a cup of tea, gave me a cigarette to try and calm me down. Give me a cigarette. And I did then think, oh, this is okay. They've just made a mistake. Yeah, I dragged you. Uh, they think Absolutely. I'm something I'm not. And I'm going to go home. Um, and a few minutes later, after I'd finished a cup of tea, uh, Rose grabbed over me and tried to kiss me on the mouth. Ew! And the mouth. These are people oh. of the Wests. She abuses the freaking girls more too. Joy, more satisfaction, more fulfillment. The wife knows. Really she kisses the girls. No, she, they have, they're they're together in it, man. They're they're a team. Oh, it's so gross. They kidnap girls together. That's like wow. That's different. That's so you gross. These poor girls than anything else in their entire existence. And the fact that they did it together heightened the value and the pleasure to them. Fred was mostly right, watching. Yeah. And then it progressed a bit further. Um, and then they were both interfering with me. Um, and discussing my gen genitals. And oh my Fred God. Was that there was something abnormal about my genitals. But not to work. What a fucking piece of shit. Oh boy. Oh yeah. God. Why do they put these things in? I don't want to like hear that shit, man. It's fucked up. Uh... My girls. I love my baby. No, I understand, Violet. Yeah, this this stuff is rough drag, you know. Like, oh, drag! Shut up and leave me alone. When no, when they get into details. I know. I'm just sick of him. Just take a time out for someone. Put it on time out for a very long time for me, please. Da, 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 da. Like I'm really sick of him. Yeah. Trying to fucking control my chat and everything. Make it a long time. Ted, I believe in you. Alright, because he could put that right. 
if you look at what happened to her, you see the antecedents, you see the, uh, the script, if you like, for many of the things that were to come later and to be enacted with the victims who were murdered most terribly. And so they decide to stop and, right, we'll calm you back down now. We're going to take you home soon. Yeah. Get me another cup of tea. Take my drag, Melly. Drag. I'm just sick of him. Dad Gate will have his cup of tea. He's being passive aggressive and, uh, and it's getting on my nerves. Thank you, Prof Cracker, for gifting Violet West Doll a gift. They used her for their immediate sexual gratification. That was important to them. They, they raped her, they dominated her, they controlled her. But remember, even at this stage, they were not in a hurry. They didn't expect to uh, kill her necessarily, but neither did they expect her to be gone from them very soon. One of their weaknesses, one of their areas of um, being blinkered, is not really to understand. Thank you, maybe the quiet. They oh. really are sentient, active people. And that oh. means if they can get away. Every they... time I'm on, he's stalking me. It's so creepy. I need a break from him. He will. If they can oppose, they will. And so I tried to shout out. Rose put a pillow over All me. Alright, Ted. And smothered me. Holy shit. First I was kind of, kind of struggling with that. And then I thought, no, just, just go with that. You know, you kind of give up. And it's just so easy to just let it go. Just go off to sleep. And that's it. It's over with. Fred came back and pulled the pillow off me, and that's when they um, ripped me up on my neck. And oh my God, that poor woman! So messed up, dude. So fucked up. Yeah. God bless her. I know. Horrible fucking psycho people. Right. Ridiculous. And that's when they threatened to kill me. Um, they said, and then it's all about I sex. Yeah, exactly, maybe. Me. It's really fucking gross. And they said, um, we're going to keep you in the sun and we're going to let It's off. like, I'm not, I'm not fucking 16 years old. I, I don't need it to be talking about that all the time. No. No. It's not a fascination to me. I've thoroughly explored that area. Yeah. <laughs> Got friends use you, and when they finished with you, we're gonna kill you, and we're gonna bury you under this paving stones at Gloucester. And he he added that you know there are, there are hundreds of girls buried there. The police haven't found them, and they're not gonna find you. Oh, that poor girl. Crazy shit. Being in the middle of those two psychopaths. Caroline was not alone. Evidence found with the remains of the West's victims suggested they'd been through something similar before their lives had been ended. We found one knife. It couldn't have been the knife that dismembered them because it was a long bread knife type, which was a bit round-ended. It couldn't be used for that. And the other things, of course, were uh, bondage materials, I suppose you'd call them. They were sort of masks of sticky tape. Stuff you tape on parcels wrapped around the head and some plastic tubes which had been pushed up nostrils. Pretty bizarre stuff. <laughs> nostrils? Remember, if you look at what happened to these young <laughs> women, you see a progression of, of debasement, of mutilation. You see uh, physical mutilation. All of physical these mutilation. are much more enjoyable way, I got my taxes. when they can be repeated oh. in discussion in shared memory right. after the event and oh, this awesome. would be an area where rosemary for frederick west would be absolutely that, vital that, she had enormous value that. to him in 1972 caroline roberts was raped abducted and nearly murdered by fred and rosemary west they spared caroline after she promised to stay silent about her ordeal she slipped away at the first opportunity and went to the police Still traumatized, Caroline was unable to face a rape trial, so the police charged the Wests <laughs> with indecent assault. Fred and Rose were released with a £100 fine. Wow. I think the most shocking aspect That's of all? this case is it ever got to being um, a set of serial killers plying their trade. 
everything that we know about the Wests was evident in that first case that went before the magistrates all those They years only ago. got fined a hundred pounds That's for it. doing that to that girl? That's the and the shit they did to her was fucking horrible. Didn't Wow. That's fucked up. A hundred pounds. No jail time? She she was raped and sexually assaulted and shit. How the fuck? What? Fuck that shit, that's man. Ridiculous. That's disgusting. That's not. That's that's not justice. That's not justice at all. Not even remotely justice. Right. That's disturbing shit. Where is the fucking law? What the fuck? Instead of serving a prison term for rape, the Wests were free to murder Linda Goff. Lucy Partington wow. and Caroline. Again, Hunter cops fail. It's only a year dude. You don't get this is from Caroline's shit. statement. Don't get it was clear to the police that Fred mother. and Rose were in it together. She's a perfect mother. Fred had been lying to protect Rose, who was still protesting her innocence. Uh huh. Now under arrest, Rose right. was summoned to the magistrate's court where she would be charged jointly with Fred Good. for nine counts of murder. In court, Rose would her be face shouldn't be covered. On each occasion, she snubbed him, uh, looked away from him. Oh, really? Didn't accept his attempt at touching her or advances. And this clearly quite perturbed him. Rejected and dismayed, Fred wrote Rose a letter. Well, Rose, it's your birthday. You'll be 41. It's still beautiful. Still lovely. On New Year's Day, around one o'clock. We'll always be in love. Most wonderful thing in the world was when I met you. Boy. West using parts cut from prison blanket and making that must be a movie. Snake-like rolled rope. We should look up that movie. I'll which he very neatly blanket stitched. About this. I'm yeah. A present. All I have is my life. I think this is for well, I was asked by the investigators, you know, did I think there was any risk that um, the Wests might kill themselves or hurt themselves in an attempt to uh, avoid justice or if they tried to escape or uh, what their defense might be. And my view was very clear. Yeah, we did Rosemary Wolf West, Creek. Um, certainly before a trial, would never make any admissions. That although it, it hadn't been yeah. anticipated by folks years before, she psychologically was much stronger, much more intact than Frederick West ever was. She would not say anything. Frederick West was very different. If he learned that Rosemary was in fact repudiating him, then he would almost certainly try to kill himself. And Rosemary began to repudiate him. Oh, oh my gosh. She gets rid of him too. Fuck. Yeah. You feel better now? Yeah. <laughs> you, you did. You missed Wolf Creek. These people are nuts. Now she's going to repudiate him trying to get him to kill himself. That's love, babe. Oh, that's yeah. that's love, isn't it? Super. That's great. And so he killed himself. He did? No way. He did. Fred took the truth with him to the grave. And with him Holy crap, she got him to do it. Wow. That's pretty insane. Wow. Wow. That's a pretty powerful uh, mind of a person that can... Wow, Rose broke him. Manipulate somebody like that. I know, right? She broke him. Yeah. Something tells me she was the one wearing the pants in all these schemes. Yeah, it seems that way. No evidence linking Rose directly to the murders. It looked as if the Wests could escape justice. 25 Midland Road, the West's former home. It's on the couch. Under cheap kitchen linoleum lay the body of a child. She had been there for over two decades until the police recovered her. Eight-year-old Charmaine was Fred's stepdaughter. Her mother, Rena Costello, had been murdered by Fred and buried in a field at Much Markle. Charmaine had last been seen in 1971. Wow. The year Fred spent nine months in prison leaving Charmaine 
in Rose's car. Oh! He was in prison. She's an idiot. She killed a little girl while while he was in prison. Ah, oh, nah. You're an idiot woman. Good note for herself. And he clearly couldn't have done it. And Rosemary had a problem. It was the vital evidence the police needed to convict Rose. But there was a hitch. The police couldn't find a photograph of Charmaine that showed her teeth. Without it, Professor Whitaker couldn't determine the date of her death. And without a date, Rose West would get away with murder. Ah! That's some bullshit. Nah, she's not gonna get away with it. She can't get away with it. Before he killed himself, Fred West confessed to the murder of 12 women. Nine were found at Cromwell Street. No. And now, two more burial sites had been uncovered. Rena Costello, Fred's first wife, and her friend, Anne McFall, had been found under the fields at Much Markle. And now Charmaine, Fred's eight-year-old stepdaughter, was being exhumed from 25 Midland Road. Mm. Uh, okay. Right? With Fred West Not dead, and no evidence to link Rose directly to murder, oh, shit. it looked like the Wests could escape justice. The police needed to convict Rose of murder. Hi, they needed to prove their hunch that Rose killed Sean. My do your daughter's watching us? Oh my god, that's awesome. Thank you. This is kind of disturbing. But this is kind of disturbing. Sorry about that. How old is she? I hope she's of age. Yeah. It doesn't matter. You're you're watching it. Yeah, that's Charmaine, while Fred was in prison. To prove this, the police had to find a photograph of Charmaine showing her teeth. So Professor Whitaker could match it. She's to her 30. Skull. Oh, okay. Beautiful. She's fine then. That's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. So awesome. I'm almost in despair. The, the, the awesome. really sort of professional answer that I wanted to be able to give. Well, two professional answers. Who is it? And when did she die? Oh, that's so sweet, y'all. They watch us with their kids. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> that's so cute. We love you. Seriously. Yeah, I love that. That's awesome. It, see, nice. I just love having like nice fans. Like me too. Isn't that nice? Not people trying to start shit or be passive aggressive or trying to bring distraction to the chat. Yes. Oh. <laughs> that's awesome. Hey, God bless you guys and your daughters. That's beautiful. I know. That's awesome. It's awesome. We're very women friendly here. We are. <laughs> I bow to the feminine, definitely. Yes. I bow. Right. Then Professor Whitaker had a it's stroke a... of luck. A fax intended for Rose West's defense team was sent to him by mistake. Oh. I couldn't believe it. Out came, not a kind of sort of document, you know, which I could sort of look away from and, you know, turn it over and take away. It was a photograph. And it kept coming out, you know, as faxes do. And it came bigger and bigger and bigger. It was the photograph of Charmaine West that we'd been looking for. Ah, oh, her smile! So he could freaking figure out what oh, her teeth are. Teeth. Yeah! Wow. They can figure out if she'll get her now. Ah, oh, man! Gotcha! Busted! You're done. You needed her smile. That's awesome! Yeah. For months and months and months. The police were also able to locate the photographer, who not only remembered the session, but also had a record of the date he'd taken it. Oh, this was sweet. the breakthrough they needed. Perfect. Now that they had a reference point, Professor Whitaker could measure the amount of growth in Charmaine's teeth between the time the photo was taken and the point where growth had stopped. This gave him a probable date for Charmaine's death. Mm. The police had proved their hunch. Fred was in prison at the time. Finally, the case against Rose was building. Now they had a jury to convince. Mm -hmm. Rose West's trial began in Winchester in October Good. 1995. Accused of 10 counts of murder, she pleaded not guilty to all charges. Ugh. The prosecution needed an ace card. Caroline Roberts was asked to take the stand. I thought, right, you know, I mean, I don't know. Back then, I couldn't have handled it, but now I can Get her. This. I'm going to do it. I'm what happened to it. me, what happened to these girls, and I wanted to at least get justice for them. Yeah. Just, yeah. Try as I may. Attempting to explain to anybody here in Germany what it is that I am watching just results in total confusion. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, Melly, apparently there, we have a lot of fans in Germany. Yeah, we do. Apparently we are pretty popular in Germany. That's what we've heard. So, 
<laughs> and like military bases and shit. That's my yeah, military guys like us, police like us. Yes, that's what it is. I guess we're good like talk radio. Things. Yeah, we make them laugh. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm so proud of this lady taking the stand. That takes so much freaking like courage. This time I didn't care what anybody said or thought about me. I was going in there and I was going to stand up to them. I knew she wasn't innocent. When I was attacked, the nearest I came to death was at her aunt's. And so I, I knew she was capable of murder. Mm -hmm. Had the combination of Caroline's strong witness statement and Professor Whitaker's evidence from the photograph helped to swing the jury. You're just the difficult to defy. Rose West was found <laughs> guilty on ten counts of murder. The trial judge had sentenced her, said she should never be released. She is always She looks like an old granny. Maintain her innocence. Juanita Mott. Therese Siegenthal. Linda, if I know that Rosemary West was sexually abused as a child by her father, and I know that when she was 15, she was abducted from a, a bus stop and raped, and that four years later, when she was 19, that's what happened to Lucy. Catherine yeah. Costello, and I gradually, as the years have gone by, I've, I've felt more compassion for her. Lucy Partington. And I do hope that something of her life can be healed. That's awful. So many people. Hans Jürgen is slightly suspicious. Well, I, I don't know. I'm just a, a, a Twitch streamer who talks to my audience and then does random crap. <laughs> Who knows? Hi, baby. Hi. You okay? Yeah. Heartburn or something? A little bit, yeah. It's probably just the fucking monster. Probably. It's the monster. You should have some antacids. Uh, I only have one. There's only two left. Have them. I don't need both of them. No, have, have them. I'll say, I mean, I'll okay. say that for later. All right. I mean, you need one. <laughs> <laughs> and my baby. Oh, you're just difficult. Yeah, see? Yeah, I guess I am difficult to define. I just think you're pretty, though. Baby. Winter fresh. Mm. It's cute. The thing about Rosemary West is that she was in effect a blank canvas. And the thing that Frederick West did was to provide a platform, to provide a runway that she flew from. He was able to nurture her, to encourage her, to, if you like, show her the way. What he didn't anticipate, I'm quite sure, but was enormously gratified by was the fact that she flew past him. Oh, they knocked the place down. That's good. Yeah. I believe places like that with so many murders behind it, they, they need to be knocked down. The energy, man. That's Yeah. It's real. That's real shit. Who's Mary? Hmm. We'll find out. In 1996, the police supervised a five-day demolition of 25 Cromwell Street. Speculation about other bodies, other. Po I don't believe I know any Marys. What she goes at? What is she under? And what's going on with her? Is she okay? 
there was speculation about other bodies in the house. Wow. They had to, they decimated that house to look for more bodies. Seriously, how many how many people did this guy kill? How, and this woman. Yeah, sorry. Possible victims of the Wests never found by the police. Both of them. Continues to this day. They're still searching for possible victims. Holy shit. That's insane. <clears throat> yeah, that's nuts. That's nuts, man. That is nuts. Do not show up to YouTubers' houses. This is weird. It really is. Definitely is weird. Very is. <clears throat> Eris Dia? crime has occurred and you have the evidence that this crime has occurred the right thing to do is to go to the police about it not YouTube oh. in 2009 when I was able to get away from a murderer holy shit I went to the police I did not make a post on YouTube about it I went to the authorities and my aunt and Adonis Paul and original owl they all want to come to YouTube with this crime and tell you all that I've committed this crime and they want me persecuted for it. Their thousands of fans are going to hound me for the rest of my life for this crime they accuse me of committing. But not a single one of them has ever attempted to have it go to court and prove that I committed this crime. Yeah. Because they know they can't. They're accusing me of a crime somebody else not only committed but confessed to. If they truly have all of this evidence against me, they would go to the police. Oh. They do the same shit to me. So I get that. <sighs> Whatever. They have it. They have all of the court transcripts. All of it. Everything they need. And yet, where am I? I walk around outside Los Angeles. Is this what I look? Is this a prison cell? They have court transcripts for a man who confessed to the murder he committed. They have nothing on me. And if they do, they should prove that in court. Instead of running their mouths to their fans and trying to have me eliminated. Just because they believe I committed a crime, somebody else committed. Okay. Mm -hmm. Huh. Okay. That was two hours ago? Huh. Alright. Uh, I've never heard of this woman before. Me neither. It's nobody's business to attack this woman over something they may have done or may have not done. Who cares? <laughs> oh, Lord. I'm not going to be wrapped up in that stuff. <laughs> no, no. Nah. No, we want true crime. Nah. Nah, I'm not going on internet rumors and shit like that. No, let's just, like, let's stick to true crime videos. Yeah, the produced ones, like, stories. Ooh, Eileen Warnos. That is a rough story. No? Okay. No, go for it. Go for I it, mean, man. we've done, we've seen. I we know, know her story pretty much, Yeah, but you can do her real story. I've never seen a story thing like that on her so I'm not gonna get in that shit no no
Bolo Young. No. He's the shit. She antagonizes others on a daily basis. Don't get involved. She, yeah. She's bipolar. Yeah, and... screw that. Bolo. Yeah, fuck that shit. I ain't fucking with people like that. No, no, no. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Anne Boleyn Reed shifts, projects, and binges again. Well, that's just her fucking decision. We need more uh, YouTube killers. I know. I'm looking. That's what we need. The evil love triangle murder. Whoa. That killed both men. It's a woman. <coughs> it's a woman. Hi, today. Women are nuts when they do shit. They get a little nuts. Mm. Hello, Zabonkers. How are you? A threesome murder, dude. A threesome murder. And then we'll... I, the Snowtown murders. Okay. Mm. Yeah, I keep suggesting stuff. This is great. Like, Yeah. You guys are providing good stuff. Shit. All right, we'll do that after. The Snowtown murders. Okay. All right. Oh, there's a little independent thing Film. right there for it. Mm -hmm. I want to celebrate. I bought you a present. I want to celebrate too. I want to trust me. <laughs> Just don't get all funny out of the dog. Yeah, I'll try. Fresh you makes the car me. <laughs> Finish this job and move on. Just let the future be there. Oh, we've seen the pig lady. Yeah. We've done the pig lady. Yeah, we did. Sean Vincent Gillis. Okay. He's nuts. Oh, look at that 80s hair. <laughs> God dang, that is some 80s hair. Extreme 80s. Holy shnikes. <laughs> I think this one is probably going to be funny. Maybe. With these two women. Or this woman. I think we have sex tomorrow night. This is a disturbing phone call that took place in March 2016. And in this conversation, two crazed lovers were discussing their plans to murder her ex-husband. What? In Bianca's mind, her motive was simple. And through her well-spun lies and sexual manipulation, she was willing to coerce a new husband into becoming her personal assassin. Now, sadly, their plans would not go as expected. Jesus. And, even worse, the consequences of their actions would shatter the lives of not one, but three families. But who exactly was this woman? What did she do to become known as Melbourne's Black Widow? And how did she manage to evade the law for so many years afterwards? I what mean... Kind of afterwards. Jason's always down for it. What? Sex. Yeah. Same. All it takes to rev me up is just like a heavy making out. And yeah. then we're pretty much ready to go. He's like, I'm a sexy bitch. I, l I, love, uh, I love kissing. Me too. Making out's real good. Welcome back to Coffee House Crime, folks, and welcome to 2023. My name is Adrian, and today's story is a wild one. We're looking into the case of Bianca Edmonds. If lies and manipulation weren't enough for you, this case holds a massive amount of content, including interrogations, voice recordings, No, footage, not at all the bonkers. No. But before we begin, uh, no. just to let you just know, there's true crime yeah. strange cases here weekly, yeah, we so it. if it is your sort of thing, please yeah. consider subscribing to Coffee House Crime. So let's get straight into the first case of 2023, folks. <coughs> please grab yourself a coffee, pull up a seat, and get ready for the deep dive. This is, this the is case a recent Bianca crime. Edmonds. This is from 10 days ago. Yeah. Ooh, coffee. Yeah, that sounds so good. That okay. looks so beautiful. An actual coffee. Ah. Ah. Starbucks. Starbucks. 
Grab your boots and hop into your nearest 4x4, because our case today pulls us into the floodplains of Victoria, Australia. Ah, oh, God, another Australian crazy shit. Aussies. We've got to do Aussies. We're covering the Aussies today, eh? Hey, Oi. Oi. No, Oi isn't Aussies, man. Or I guess it can be, too. I don't know, and I don't fucking care. Yeah. Whatever. Oh my god. Sabuckers, that's racist. Uh. <laughs> that most of Australia's population lives near the coastline. And in fact, more than 85% of the dude. country's 26 million residents live within 30 miles of the deep blue. Uh. But when you think of rural Australia, the great outback is likely that's the first beautiful. thing to spring to mind. But there is actually much more to it outside of tumbleweed, dingoes, and the red sand. This is for dingoes! 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 We get the dingoes! And to be honest with you, throw me blind into Google Maps and I like, couldn't tell you the difference between the <laughs> Take Route 55 and drive roughly 100 miles sense. north of Melbourne, and you will eventually find yourself in the small it's city of Shepparton. Good, you can probably guess that not a lot goes on here. Oh, that's so pretty. That looks just like that one building in Red, in Red Dead. Dead. Yeah. You know what I'm talking the about? The bar in St. Denis. Yeah. Exactly like it. Exactly. The you bar. know what I'm talking about, guys, in Red Dead 2, that bar? Insane, Where the, the fucking amazing fucking older fucking woman is Yeah, in. you love her. I fucking love you her. You like, want to be her. I do. <laughs> She's like the fabulous Molly whatever. Yeah. Molly whatever. Yes, and the building in New Orleans. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. in St. Denis. Exactly like it. It does, it's man. Crazy. With the sleepy city having only a small population of around 69,000 residents. Formerly a sheep station and a river crossing in the mid-19th the century, Hi, it underwent significant transformation to become a railway town. And since then, a Shepton railway is town is just where they got the red dead shit. The town also plays host as a major shopping and service center for the greater regional area. And if you head downtown, there seems to be plenty to do here too, with many shops, bars, and restaurants keeping the place alive. To add to this, a network of parks, reserves, and forests follow the many paths laid through Shepparton, all of which offer fantastic oh, sights and beautiful. through the bushwalking tracks. Skipping back to the year 2016, one of those living within the leafy suburbs of Shepparton was a woman by the name of Bianca Edmonds. Now, Bitch. very little is known about her childhood or past, but in light of today's story, it is not necessary to know. Mm -hmm. Born in 1986, her mother Ellen raised her to be a polite young girl, and moving into her adult year... She's evil. She's like, I will take all the men's down. The bad seed. All of them. I've been to Australia, it exists. <laughs> That's good. I don't believe you. <laughs> <laughs> the existence of Australia is a fucking conspiracy theory. Hunt koalas. <laughs> Petting dingoes. Stroke your dingo. You made that up. <laughs> <laughs> this is some tea. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Guess it was a dream. Oh well. Bianca is pretty. Is very pretty though. She is, but she's a deadly lass. She's a deadly lass. This Bianca became a confident young woman, which paired well with her long brown hair and doe-like eyes. <laughs> Do. Both of which are just two of the many things yeah, that a former husband, guys. Michael Capiciano, loved about her. Born in the year 1990, Michael was about four years her junior. Living in the northwestern suburb of West Meadows at the time he met Bianca, Mom. the two eventually grew close West enough to Meadows. fall into a relationship. Although the two were not formally married, they were committed enough to be engaged to one another. And fast forward to the year 2013, Bianca felt that's pregnant so with his child. Yeah, that's hot. And fast forward that. nine months later, yeah, in the year 2014, yeah, the two young lovers welcomed their first happen. son into the world, who will remain unnamed for a safe day. But things were not going very well back at home. And as their commitments and time together started to accumulate, Bianca and Michael found themselves getting into many heated arguments. Uh -oh. And with the arguments and fights becoming quite volatile, uh -oh. they eventually broke up leaving a baby in the middle of a family now torn apart. Nah, As it nah. often goes between separated parents, Bianca and Michael fought hard to gain custody of their child, and with these custody battles came much turbulence and resentment. This is where Glenn Cassidy enters the scene, and in the absence of Michael, he entered Bianca's life to take his place. Yeah. Born in the year 1973 and 49 years old at the time, Glenn was 13 years her senior. 49. Glenn was a man of relative simplicity. Working in the Shepparton area as a heavy vehicle operator... Scotland is a real place. I don't believe it. It can't be. It has to be a myth. 
You know, they talk about that Loch Ness up there, so that's got to be a myth. Loch Ness? Yeah. It's a myth because the Loch Ness, that's it. The only thing that exists in Scotland is my beautiful, beautiful, perfect golf course. <laughs> Not a Scotland accent. I don't give a fuck. It's mine. And it's the best in Scotland. My goodness. <laughs> he was settled and relatively yeah, No, I didn't hire Cubans lifestyle. to clean it. Unfortunately, the man was also rather gullible Holy and he needed shit. help with his reading and writing. But nevertheless, he found a true calling in controlling <laughs> and I paid him. and knew how to operate complex and versatile construction vehicles. Okay. Now, although he had age and Where's experience over today? Bianca, it transpires that she was the one firmly wearing the trousers Fork. in their relationship. Things moved Fork relatively seat. fast between the two, and not long after connecting on the dating app Tinder, they found themselves in each other's bed. Nessie's real. Despite having a child and being engaged to Michael, <coughs> to I think time there's something wrong there. with him. And as 2015 drew you to think a it's like a the discussion of marriage lingered in the air. But this did nothing Rick to stop the toxic and volatile arguments between her and her ex-husband, Michael. And the baggage created by her former yeah. relationship would become a significant obstacle between See? Bianca and Glenn. <laughs> On the I other hand, Michael had found himself a new partner named Silvana. And Silvana. He almost touched my boob. You see that? See, they put a new girl in he there. He almost sexually assaulted me. What? He's like, what? That's horrible. Oh, baby, I saw these. I retract that statement. <laughs> <laughs> but for real, they put they want they put a new new girl in the fucking relationship. They did. Silvana. Okay. Now what's gonna happen with that? What do you, this it leads to murder, doesn't it? Am I right? Huh. It leads to murder. They put a third woman involved. They put a third person involved. They brought another woman in, and it ends in murder. Wow, look at all that land. Man, you gotta be careful when you do this shit, if you're gonna do it. Ah. Oh. While he and his new girlfriend settled into their home in oh. Melbourne, Bianca and Glenn moved in together 100 miles away in <laughs> Chapter. Needless to say, Silvana took Michael's side in the feud, as did Glenn Ooh. with Bianca. But the key difference here is how Bianca spun her version of the story. Moving forward, she made very Bobby. damaging accusations about Michael, and often portrayed him in the worst possible ways towards Glenn. Oh, Naturally, really? Glenn didn't take too kindly to Michael after this. And as the ongoing custodial... She was one of those girls, you know? She broke up with a dude, and she just totally ragged his freaking like... Crap, man. What the fuck? You're from Melbourne? No. Ah, okay. Awesome. Aussies. <laughs> Haggis hunting? What? Haggis. Ugh. You have to have it with the children. Not interested. Battle over Michael and Bianca's son raged on. A parallel feud between the two men began to surface. Now, ever since breaking up with Bianca, Look at those Michael's purple trees. That's so pretty. Son once a week at best. And the current conditions meant it had to be with supervision as well. But legally speaking, Michael was making good progress in seeing his son more often and oh. without vigilance. This progress angered Bianca quite significantly, and if Bianca was mad, then Glenn would surely follow suit. Whoa. Despite the ongoing hostilities, there were happy milestones to celebrate too, as in February 2016, the couple officially married, with Bianca strangely retaining her own surname after the ceremony. But their marriage came with many strange conditions. That is See, weird. that is weird for a woman to t just keep, to her, keep surname. her name. Yeah. That's interesting. That's different. I just think that's disrespectful to your husband. No, that's just my opinion. I, I wouldn't take it that way. You wouldn't? No. I wouldn't take it that way. Uh... It's just a custom. It, 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 it's totally, you could do it or not. But but when, when somebody chooses not to specifically, it makes you go, why? Yeah. Why, why would I you... just personally feel that's disrespectful. I, I, would, I definitely would prefer you to have my name. I want your name. Yeah, I know. You'll get it. We just, God, God this fucking bullshit that happens. And <laughs> it pushes everything back. Right. Know? Annoying bullshit. Just constant. Something. Always. That prevents shit. I know. Alright. We just have fun. Fuck it.
actions. And we'll get there. Yeah. This is where our story takes a very sudden and serious turn. It turns out that the exaggerated and aggressive conversations about Michael were not simply means for Bianca to release some of her built-up frustration. Instead, and shockingly, she was manipulating and training Glenn for a very horrendous mission. Oh, oh no. Oh, According to multiple to sources near the yeah. Glenn's Cassidy household, Bianca often demanded that Glenn was to get vengeance on Michael. And to add to this, she would also offer rewards for this behavior. She often called her husband spineless, piss-weak, and a coward, oh, and told him that he had no balls if he wasn't willing to protect his family <laughs> and Michael. The lies and manipulation did not stop there either. And on the topic of his balls, Bianca was incredibly and cruelly holding them captive. She always refused to let him climax during sex, and this would what? never change unless he was willing to complete his deathly mission. Now, in most cases, really? most of us would come to our senses and realize that no man or woman is worth this carrying is out such a brutal deed. However, sex. Glenn, he didn't see it that way, and even more tragically... That's so abusive! Wow. That is so abusive! She's quite a fucking vixen, isn't she? That is so abusive. Ah. Oh. I would never do that. That's buzz, insane. Buzz, buzz even committed to the I think idea. That's William. And on March 12, 2016, mm. the lives of four families would yeah, change is. forever. And his schemes mm. would screw up so royally that the consequences were even worse than initially planned. March 12, 2016. At 7.32pm, a harrowing phone call was made to the authorities. The terrified voice of a woman yeah, claimed that she and her good. boyfriend had been attacked in their home in Pasco Street, found in West Meadows, North Melbourne. Pasco. Officers responding to the scene were met with a horrific yet very complicated story. A man had arrived at the property with a sawn-off shotgun, Damn. and after her boyfriend equipped himself with a knife and answered the door, a fight broke out. Now, usually, a fight like this will end with one clear winner. But unexpectedly, fear the this reaper. Did not Don't fear the reaper. Lost, and Boy, instead, there there's something two. in my head. The prophecy... na, 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 na. Okay, I mean, I love that song. It's alright. Just, it's alright. It's kind of chill, you know. It brings the energy down a bit. Ah. <laughs> Belonged to Michael Capasiena. And, as you can likely guess, the intruder was no other than Glenn Cassidy. Ah. Unfortunately, after invading his home, Glenn had landed a successful fatal shot to Michael's head. But only after being mortally wounded by his victim with the knife. And after attacking Michael's girlfriend, Silvana, he too bled out to his death. Oh, the community no. of West Meadows was shocked Jeez. by the news. Murder was one thing, but the story was quite bizarrely unique to include two deaths and a sawn-off shotgun. Although March the 12th signified the end of Michael's and Glenn's lives, their story was only just about to begin, as what officers learned over the following months and years was insane. Now, Australia is a country full of many peculiar creatures, and their murder mm. cases tend to fall in the same category, too. I never so said I was going to get my mammogram. all the strings to make this crime Nick. happen. And over time, authorities and I don't want to talk about it right now. Now, just a heads up, but there is so much content to cover here, so moving forward, we'll be reviewing all of it in a time chronological order before moving to trial proceedings. Wow. It all started with a single raw and relatively instinctive emotion. And of course, I'm talking about greed. Even before she had met Glenn, Bianca started to worry about losing full custody of her young son. Now, that is an undeniable fact, and one which could even be considered understandable. But at some undefined point in time, this emotion got the better of her, and she decided that the only way to resolve the issue was to take her husband, Michael, out of the equation permanently. <laughs> we don't know if this was before or after she had met Glenn, nor do we know if she already had evil intentions from the start of their relationship, or even if she ever loved hell? him at all. But moving forward, Bianca recognized okay. Glenn's gullible and naive demeanor, and she planted the seed of doubt, hatred, butter. and desperation into his mind. While allegedly using intense sexual manipulation as leverage over him, Bianca persuaded Glenn that he must kill Michael to save the family and his stepson. And unfortunately, after falling... I'm okay. I got it covered. Jason has it covered. Huh? Yeah. We got it covered. Don't worry. Don't worry. For her charm, the two began to hatch up a plan. I, the problem I was, see, I Bianca was too heavily connected guys, to Michael, definitely. and oh, to yeah. this, she had an obvious motive too. 
So, rather conveniently, she told Glenn that he would have to do the job alone. And that job was supposedly simple enough. Find a disposable gun unrelated to either of them, wow. show up at Michael's home, and then take him out. It turns out that in order to help complete the hit, Thank the pair the out Michael's home and neighborhood. This included specific details of the houses around Michael, such as which had barking dogs and which had security lights. Unfortunately, there was a lot you of... You see those English coins? They're so weird compared to ours. It's like, what, what, what does one mean? It's five coins. Yeah, but I, like, I don't know by the shape. Like, normal people would know what it is by the shape. Like, I don't. Well, if you live there, I, I don't know English money. If you live there, you'd learn the currency. So I guess so. It's no big deal. I guess. You think it would be hard to learn the currency? No. No? No, no not at all. Okay. Whoa. <laughs> Cactus Jack, bro. <laughs> Fucking Cactus Jack. Bang, bang. Bang, bang. Yeah. Mankind, it's all Mick Foley's yes. We're dude love. <laughs> He's like, Argh. dude love, fuck yes. Yes. He's my favorite. Mick Foley's great. He's one of the best wrestlers of all time. He's clumsy as fuck, it doesn't matter. He's great. He's awesome. <laughs> 